Hello, and welcome to my new to me LeBlond. So the last few weeks I have spent um, working on and cleaning and fixing this machine. It has incurred a lot of wear, uh, some damage, um, things of that nature. I will, I'll bring you in and uh, give you a little bit of a better look at some of what's still left to address and some of what is probably just not going to be able to be addressed, um, but that is there. So this machine I, I am imagining would be used, you know, kind of all day in a production environment with uh, coolant running and some cutting oils and whatever else and then at the end of the day it would just be turned off and that stuff would be left to just kind of sit and dry on the ways and there was a good 16th of an inch layer of this stuff that i had to really really work to get off and then underneath of it once i did get it off you could see that it was just um it had just caused some pretty serious corrosion and pitting there so that's one thing and if I bring you down here, sorry for the handy cam, by the way, but it's the easiest way to do this part. If I bring you down here uh, behind the um, carriage, you can see here there is a really significant ridge line that has been worn in from the tailstock. And that's, that's a pretty serious line there. I can definitely catch my fingernail on that. And it goes kind of all the way back here. The sun is shining kind of bright down here. And it slowly starts to dissipate as you get further down towards the tailstock until the very end of the ways there is no ridge at all. And so, you know, obviously up here towards the chalk, this is where the tailstock was just back and forth, back and forth. And, um, you know, it just wore that ridge. So the tailstock itself, uh, the underside here is worn to match that. So that's something I'm gonna have to address maybe with some scraping and um, I don't know, maybe some Mowgli's or Turkite or something. I don't know, I'll get to that eventually. I'm not super worried about that one at the moment because um, as long as I know it's there, I can work around it until I get it fixed. So let me show you what we are going to be working on today. All right, so for today, what we'll be working on, as you can see, I have a dial indicator that is uh, connected to my cross slide here, or is measuring my cross slide here. And the feed screw and nut are very, very worn. And I will get you a better shot of that indicator and show you just how worn they are. All right, you are right over top of the indicator now, and I'm just gonna pull the cross slide back and forth so that you can see how much wear is in this lead screw and nut. <clears throat> All right, so that is 95 thousandths. And as you can see, back and forth, about 95 thousandths of wear. So that is pretty significant. Um, it's, it's so bad really that when you actually try and use the cross slide, um, like the dial, it's, you know, it's really approaching unusable. So we are going to try and remedy that. And the first thing we will be making is a new feed screw. Okay. So I have to admit, I did take the easy way out and I ordered a piece of three quarter by eight TPI Acme all thread from McMaster car. But for now, I just wanted to get the machine up and running and it was just as cheap to buy this preformed Acme all thread as it would have been to buy a piece of nice material to single point this whole thing myself. So that brings us to my handy dandy notebook. I took some just some quick measurements while I had the original feed screw out of the machine. So what we are going to do is just cut all of these features into this length of all thread. Um, and yeah, after that, we will have to make a nut, but cross that bridge when we come to it. For now, we will be turning this into this. So let's get started. All right, so I'm gonna try this voiceover thing here. Starting off, 
uh, by facing and putting a center into uh, the end of the part here. This thing has, uh, well, the, the features that we're going to be putting into this, they're long and thin. It has two major features, on either, one on either end, and they're both pretty long and thin. So, of course, um, face, center, and now just turning this first feature down to size. This is uh, a six inch uh, section, turning it down to half inch diameter. And this is what actually interfaces with um, the hand wheel side. And just showing that we hit the dimension here. And this feature here will actually get a keyway, keyway cut into it later, but we'll see that when we get to the mill. And this is what actually um, kind of slides back and forth and gives you the telescoping taper attachment action once it has that keyway cut into it. So now I flip the part around and getting ready to cut this long section that protrudes out of the back of the cross slide and uh, actually goes through the actual taper attachment. Um, and this section here is again, uh, it was a half inch if I recall correctly, but it's just a little over 12 inches in length. So I think you can hear a little bit of chatter in the background here. And yeah, and that's, uh, I had some, a little bit of trouble with uh, getting a good finish on this because of uh, the long, thin length. And uh, I didn't have a follow rest for this machine. But, you know, it, it came out okay. Just had to be careful, take my time, um, sharpened my tool really, really good, and it, it went okay. And here, just cutting a little relief, there will actually be a bearing that sits against this um, section of thread here, so I just wanted to give it a nice square shoulder to sit against, and just using a parting tool to cut that relief in there. And that, uh, that stuff that I'm using is, is LubraCut, I showed you that. That stuff's awesome, it's, um, it's a beeswax based cutting paste, uh, and it's fantastic. It doesn't have a really nasty chemical smell when it gets hot. It actually smells kind of nice, and it's just mostly beeswax, so it's not as terrible for you as some of the other stuff. I like it a lot. Now just preparing to cut some threads, getting that tool squared up against the work, and about to uh, do my scratch pass. Now this is this threaded feature is on the very end of that long feature that we just cut. And these or this section is where the two locking like the, the lock nuts. There's two nuts and they just kind of lock against each other. Uh, there's a bearing that sits behind those. <clears throat> so there's a bearing at either end of this kind of longer section. And uh, the lock nuts lock everything in place so that it doesn't when you move the cross slide or move the uh, when the taper attachment works so that it doesn't actually just move this whole part in and out. And just testing the fit here with a die. I actually cut those threads a little too deep. You can probably probably tell, but you know, whatever. It's fine. It's just for a couple of lock nuts, so it'll work fine. All right, so uh, moving over to the mill, just getting things cleaned up, and I'm using this spin indexer here, but I'm just using it as a convenient collet block. Um, there's nothing that you know uh, needs to be done that involves the spinning or <laughs> indexing parts of this thing. It's just a convenient collet block. But um, all that we have to do on the mill is cut a couple of keyways. Uh, there's going to be one keyway, the first one we cut here in the end with the uh, jam nuts. There's just a, a washer with like a key in it that goes behind those jam nuts. So one keyway to cut there and then the other keyway to cut on the other end uh, that interfaces with the key um, inside of the, the handle that uh, this slides into towards the, the user end of the cross slide. 
and that's it so we'll cut these keyways and we will be done all right so I think this is pretty self-explanatory just using this center finder to find the center of this feature here to cut this keyway I'm gonna use just a 1 8 4 flute high-speed steel end mill to cut both of these keyways um, yeah, really not a big deal just uh, find your center find your depth and cut your keyway You're done And just a quick test fit to make sure it fits. Then repeat that whole process one more time and we are finished. Okay, so here it is, uh, finished product. Here is the new one next to the old one. And if I go handy cam here, I can give you a little bit better look. Um, first, you can see now that it's out of the machine just how worn these threads actually were. Uh, you can see that those crests are like razor thin. So even though I used a generic off the shelf piece of Acme all thread, um, I think it's going to be much better than this old worn thing here. In terms of, you know, how it came out, I am, you know, pretty happy. You can see I got my keyway here and that came out pretty good. And down here on this end, um, I did struggle with my surface finishes because this is, you know, so long and thin but I really don't think it's gonna be a huge deal. Uh, so, you know, that's fine. And the thread and a uh, little keyway down the end here, that came out fine. And here, I actually had to just turn a little brass kind of uh, shim here to create this shoulder. There's a bearing that rides against this. I, I, of course, couldn't do it out of the stock because it's three quarter inch in diameter and the thread itself is three quarter inch. And so I had to just kind of make do. And so I've just got a little brass shin there. I think that should work out fine. So, yeah, I am, you know, generally relatively happy with um, how it came out. I think it's going to work out for me. And so I guess, uh, yeah, thanks for coming along for the ride, if you stuck around, and I'll try not to make you sick with this camera. But uh, yeah, thanks for coming along. And I guess next, I actually have to make the nut to go along with this thread, so maybe I'll video that too, I'm not sure. But yeah, thanks a lot, and see you next time, I guess? Okay, bye.